we are uh, we're rolling now. Okay. Yeah, we were talking about. Do you, wait, did you want to intro the thing, or should we just talk about Chinese mosquitoes? He doesn't even have his headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> we're just saying we love smoking indoors. Yeah, it's it's great to because do. Uh, China. Um, because China. Yeah, China took our rights away. Jason, can I have the uh, tamp? Oh yeah, sorry, buddy. There you I don't go. always smoke indoors, but when I do, it's indoors. No, <laughs> fuck that one right up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, the great thing is you could edit this after the fact. I, I'm gonna edit this. I think. <laughs> right. I'm you gonna, could edit it where we're just bobbing and you're killing the whole time. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> I would have to come up with something funny to say first. I thought the only segment that we should do on this episode is read all the comments from the last episode. Because mm-hmm. uh, man, they're fierce, dude. People just shitting on you. Well, people are still discovering it in the subreddit, and they're like, "Who is this dude?" And they're like, a lot of it's complimentary towards Ben, and a lot of it's not quite complimentary towards me. Are you right. blowing, blowing rings over there, champ? He's practicing it. Just learning? Yeah, he's practicing dick sucking right it's now. It's not bad, right? <laughs> Can you blow the Olympic rings? <laughs> you look like... Um, it looks like Farley a little bit. Oh, wait. Isn't it crazy that like people do that and then they just die? They make that face and die. Sometimes people make that face and they die. Yeah, that's like Elvis. Yeah. He was shitting and then he made that face and died. You remember when your parents told you that if you made that face, it would stay like that? that Were you good. on my camera when I did that? I'm on all four cameras, dude. Oh, shit. That was pretty good. This will get edited later. So we're all rolling on all four. <laughs> Somebody's going to take that and screenshot you, you know, with mm-hmm. a dick in your mouth. I found a half a pack of cigarettes when I was cleaning up the office today. And I was like, I'm at that point. I can throw these out. Yeah. And now that we're all sitting around smoking, and I just got this stupid vape. I can't blow smoke rings with a vape, I don't think. No, you can't. Have you seen those professional vapors? You look exactly like... P.T. Barnum. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you created the circus. Jace, Paul- do, you, do you remember... Uh, uh, Growing up, uh, one time I yes. tried to go into a gas station on like a family road trip thing, and I tried to hold like a stupid shitty face the whole time that was like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like pretended to be like a retarded oh, person. Fuck! I pulled a fucking muscle in my neck. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> That's what you get. Ah. Uh. ah, man! And I pulled my pants like all the way up to my tits. Yeah, that was a fun. That was a fun time. Do you remember that? I, that? Not really, but I wanted to go along with it for the story. I remember we used to ghost people at the mall. Mm. Do you remember that? We'd make our youngest brother Cole like a dog. We would make him ghost people. It's where you walk this far behind a guy. Ah, oh, that's crazy. With your face, your face <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right behind his face. <laughs> they turn around, like, like right, but right behind the small of their back, an inch away, and he would just like follow them like that, and then they would turn around and he'd like dive out of the way. And we would just be dying. All right behind his asshole. And we'd put a... Uh, <laughs> Someone's just <laughs> casually farting in the mall. Oh, it'd be like, it'd be like a 50-year-old black man. He looks oh. like Stanley from The Office. And my brother's just ghosting him. Like right behind his diaper. <laughs> just right here. Dude, we'd also put a uh, a fart machine on my little brother. And we were just <laughs> like... Dude, dude, if you've never done that, dude, I almost like pissed my pants like crying. The one with the remote? Yeah, like you go into GameStop. You yeah. Just, you just... <laughs> like, no, it's literally it's like... It's funny to be like a... But like if a child is ever like well behaved, you know they're up to something exactly really right. so Cole's like is walking with like his hands behind his back, like hmm, like picking Nothing up like here, Madden two thousand five, right. like hmm, very interesting. Hmm, Madden. And then just a huge, like obviously fake fart yeah. coming out of a ten dollar E bombs world. Could machine. he keep a straight face? Just like like it wasn't him. Cole was not bad at he it. He was pretty. He was a but pretty I good w- troll, dude. I would almost like piss myself, and I'd have to like run out, and like a little pee would come out. Yeah, and I'd be like running. And think, fuck, fuck, fuck. I've never been able to run and pee at the fuck. same time. Yeah, Ben was also like five foot three until he was like <laughs> sixteen, six, like seven six, feet tall. Sixteen. He was a little tidy guy, and he yeah. was a little troll. It was. Very By the cool. way, I want to call you out on something. What your bio says? You're six five. I am 6'5". Are you? I am. What bio? Okay, so here's here's something I've felt self-conscious about for what? a long time. I've always told people I'm 6'4". I don't know if I am. The DMV told me I, I am. I know I'm for sure 6'3". I right? am 6'5". For basketball, I got measured at 6'5". This is the worst thing you could have said to me on air. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> well, the last time I got measured, I was at Planned Parenthood 
no socks. Mm-hmm. I was pregnant. Uh, I was getting an abortion, <laughs> which I think is beautiful. By the way, where's my camera? Right I think there. it's beautiful. By the way, no, I was I was at Planned Parenthood and no shoes. I measured at six five. Mm. So that's what that's Planned Parenthood. So if you're calling Planned Parenthood a liar, I'm six five. I also weigh three hundred fifty pounds. So there's that as well. How um, how much taller would you say I a uh, you are than I? One inch. I mean, it's like we're the same height. So math. So this yeah. is a problem I have. I am actually six four. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you just fair. have a debilitating. Uh, How is that a problem issues. from a five eleven guy to a six four guy? It doesn't sound like a problem. Because every time you tell people, dude, you know how many times people ask me and Jace how tall we are? Every day. Uh, it's every day. Mm-hmm. Sure. But you're on the good end of the scale. But they're you, asking because they're enamored. But if you it. give them, you have to like guess what they think you are what they think you are and you have to say their fucking answer also i'm i'm wide like i'm not like a tall string bean so people always assume i'm six three mm-hmm. and then i say i'm six five because i am you're like bullshit they'll go, you're six three they'll go yeah. really i thought you're six three and they'll like kind of do like the larry david like stare yeah <laughs> they and get I'm their like, iphone out and start trying to measure and it. i'm like okay i lied i i needed the two inches or what's whatever. great is some you go like oh i'm six six four and they go Hmm. No, that doesn't make sense because I'm six three. Right. So that would make you seven and a half feet tall. Right. They're actually. literally like, let's, okay, short, I'm five four. Let's get back to back. <laughs> so you seem to be more, like eleven inches taller than me. <laughs> so that doesn't add up. Yeah, yeah. Like, put your hand up. Let's measure hands. Right. <laughs> people are people are like obsessed with if you're tall, you kind of don't really care that much. Yeah. Um. I mean, obviously, I care. It's in my bio, but you don't care as much as like my whole life. I've had guys. Like little tiny guys come up to me and be like, "How far, how tall are you, man?" Mm. And then you're like six five. They're like, "Man, if I if I was that tall, woo, oh. I'd, be, I'd have such a better life." I yeah. tell you, I'd be making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like something so ridiculous. Stupid. It's like you can just make those sandwiches. Yes. Yeah. Your height doesn't matter, dude. Make right. a sandwich. They'd be like, "I'd be the CEO of a big company." Right. I'd be living in a big tower and somewhere. And what they really mean, if they don't want to be crass, is they're like, I would just be smashing pussy right. left and right. I'd be, I'd love if somebody was like, I'd be in so much box, I tell you. <laughs> I'd be so gay. Yeah, I'd be so gay. I'd fuck so many dudes. I'd leave my stupid bitch wife. I'd fuck so many guys. <laughs> just slowly morphing into George W. Bush. You can't be gay unless you're over six feet tall. Right. That is, yeah, that is true. Yeah, I I think I stopped at five eleven and three quarters because that's how tall my dad was. Are you really five eleven and three quarters? I think so. The most cursed. Wow. Height. The most cursed. Height. Does it suck to be that? I wear like high heels sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you got like, lifts. Thick soles. <laughs> you have the shoes De Niro wore in the in yeah. the, the Irishman. <laughs> I grew I grew a mohawk just to try and be six feet for a little while. It's the worst, and I have people call me tall all the time. I, by the way, I think you look better without the. Fauxhawk. I, I have, uh, thank you. I have heard, yeah. uh, and the mullet. I cut the mullet off too. Mm. Um, it's better for your face shape. Yeah. It was weird rolling around because I wear all, all black every day, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, so not it's a to, production thing. Well, it's just, uh, I got it from the CEOs that don't like to make choices thing, like sure. Zucks and all those guys. Yeah, yeah. But having a mullet and the hawk and wearing all black and then rolling around with Theo, people were like, hey, man. Like Howie Mandel was like, hey, you got to dress like that to work for Theo. And I was like, Right. Yeah, I gotta get. I gotta be my own guy. I gotta get rid of it. So. Yeah, you can only choose so many eclectic things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you have an earring, you can't also have like a eye patch or something. I got a buddy that's got two earrings in both ears. Okay. Uh, he just moved to Nashville. Shout out Kelly, and he still wears like a sweatband but, under his watch. Uh, that's not great. And he's a drummer. Like he's a he's a good drummer. Mm. But like, but he wears it in real life, not to just drum. Right. Yeah, it's not great. Nah, it, it's like, bad. Yeah. You remember yeah. when jeans had patterns on the pockets? Oh, yeah. Still rocking those. Mm. Kelly, I love you, man. Don't, uh, you're not watching this. Are his earrings, does he have the big ear gauges or does he have no, an earring? No, no, no. We okay. didn't go that far. They're like bolts. They're like the big bolt when like, mm. you know, remember when everybody got their tongue pierced in the 90s? You guys oh, might yeah. be too young for that. Like the bigger the gauge, like the more whatever. Yeah, like the two, it was like the old time weightlifting be- yeah, uh, bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the ones that you think you would get if you got a Prince Albert where you're like, I'm never going to pierce my dick. Right. That's the kind <laughs> that he had in his ears. Right. Have you guys seen that dude that has like 18 piercings on his, on his I, I don't dick? Know if that's kind of. On his penis? Yeah. Like, are they just down the front? Like, he's, like he's got buns on a shirt? I think it's down the, the shaft, the like undershaft. A, the way a dragon has like scales. Scales. Yes. Yeah, on its. 
fine. So when he pisses, yeah. does it look like those hoses that water your lawn for you? He's just got to put a tarp down when he pees. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to lay. He's got to lay his whole front of his body across the toilet seat. That's he just submerges dick in the bowl. Flat. Yeah. If there was like a better uh, penis out there in terms of like shape, uh, everyone would be getting it changed to that. Hmm. You can't like invent hmm. like it, it, on an evolutionary scale, the way the penis and the vagina is, it's, t- it's totally, right. it's right on the money. So you're saying you don't think trans people are people. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> If you guys could leave the room for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have a private session. Yeah, no, that, I mean, how would you make the penis better? Here's my thing, dude. Yeah. They, they make sex dolls in Japan that are like hyper realistic. And they literally <laughs> look on. like they look like women. <laughs> right. Like they're not making them with like three or four titties and like two pussies. Well, three titties is a thing. Because there's that one Star Trek lady that has three titties. Yeah, the, to- the Total Recall lady. Oh, yeah, has sorry. Three yeah. titties. There's a sci fi lady. There's also, titties. I think you showed me this. There's the silicone tits with the pussy in the middle. What? That they make. Wait, and then you uh, fuck- which I called the greatest hits of women. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, one, it's one platter with just the titties and the pussy right, right. there. <laughs> wow. It's, it's, it's Bob Seeger, it's mm. Night Moves, and Old Time Rock and Roll. Yeah, that's all you need. <laughs> that's all you need. <laughs> all the classics. <laughs> just, we cut out the face, mm. the lower body. Mm. Yeah nothing it's like um there's the there's the half doll that's just the ass yes like, yeah like yeah it from behind they had one on i think dave had one on the show dave yes i would rather get caught with a full sex doll like like that than mm-hmm. than, than just the ass i think Have you see the guy on instagram that just fully embraces it and just like takes her to the park and like pushes her on i the think swing. i have seen that yeah yeah, yeah. He dresses her like a russian lady yeah, like a that's a rule like <laughs> lars and the real girl yeah yeah I would do that. Do you, can you guys always spot a Russian lady because she that dresses too. like it's like 2004? Yeah, she's she looks like she's from New Jersey. Right. All Russian ladies. Like fashion hasn't caught up yet. Yeah, it's like leopardy and like a little tight. Right. Yeah. And like a little, it's like, you know, they spent a couple of bucks on it, but it right. still looks cheap. Yes, exactly. Yeah. They spent money even though it looks terrible. Right. With just a fantastic $8,000 bag, but they also right. look like they bought it all at Walmart. And uh, they look like they're just very mean. Yeah. Like they don't have manners at all. I'll say this. I feel like I'm a good judge of character mm-hmm. when it comes to like morally uh, assessing people. But like I, I have no clue. Like I'll I'll be around someone for like 10 minutes and I'll have one idea of them. Like I'll be like, ah, this young fucking whatever. And then I'll realize that they're like 50. <laughs> okay. Or like I'll be hanging out with someone for like two hours and then I'll realize they have like a, a toupee. Yeah. Or like a fake leg or something like but like I, 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 the whole time, I'm just judging them for being selfish or rude or whatever. But I have no, I have no idea when it comes to any of that stuff. I, get, I can't do it. I get instant vibes on people. Like if I'm at a bar and I get a weird vibe from somebody, I'm like, hey, maybe don't talk to me. And then if they start talking to me, I'm like, you're really gonna have to pull one out like right away for right. me to change my mind. And I'm, I'm almost usually right. But if I've had enough to drink and I'm the weird dude, all those indicators go away. Mm. You guys don't drink, right? No, yeah, no. no. Corn cob pipe guy. Yeah, I'm, I smoke uh, about ten cigars a day, but mm. I don't drink. Mm. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like a Grant. Yeah. Basically, and, and I jack off to like really weird stuff. Really fucked up shit. Mm. Yeah. All right, let's go. What's the weird? <laughs> what's the weirdest thing you can think of? Uh, yeah. th- there's this one video of a guy getting his arm twisted, and he's going ah ah ah. <laughs> An Indian rug burn. <laughs> yeah. Or sorry, a Native American rug. Yeah. Oh, you jerk off to like just child pranks. Mm-hmm. Kids getting swirlies. And yeah, and a kid strawberries. Dump, a kid dumping a cherry bomb in a toilet. <laughs> yeah. Speaking, this is the kind of speaking. A of house that. getting egged. I'm just like jacking <laughs> off. You just love you love mischief. Mm-hmm. Got p- kids putting bottle rockets in like mailboxes and stuff. Speaking of mischief, uh, I have to give a shout out to our mutual friend um, Josh Shakespeare who I promised could produce this episode, but I saw that he had a show tonight, so I didn't call him. He was here yesterday, and he's in the bathroom, mm. like just spitting the hardest gangster rap. Just like, yeah, and I'm gonna, yeah, and brr, brr, brr. And I waited outside the bathroom with my phone, uh-huh. and as soon as he opened the door, I was like, brr, like really loud, and he jumped super high and like got super scared. And I, I'll show you the video, like, but I, 
okay, this is how my stories go. <laughs> and, then, and then, and then. Was he good at rapping? End, no, he was rapping somebody else's shit. Oh, okay, did he say the N word in it? A lot. <laughs> nice. A lot. <laughs> and then I was like, no. no. <laughs> he was rapping. Uh, uh, he, he's a black guy. Oh, he is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Sorry, I, that probably wasn't yeah. clear. Oh, okay. I knew that. I, well, yeah. You said he was. He's th- a nice guy. Says Very nice. But he is a black guy. He, indeed. Which is fine. Born that his way. His name is Shakespeare. <laughs> Yeah. Black guy? That's his real last name. <laughs> really? Too. It's not his stage mm. name. It's really? on his driver's license. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, I have no comment on that. <laughs> I have no opinion on this whatsoever. Yep. You're not thinking of any sort of uh, riff nope. or bit? Nope. Not a single <laughs> Shakespeare play I could make a pun about? Okay. Not even a Little Romeo and Juliet riff? Mm-mm. or <laughs> 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 You're not thinking of a single thing? Uh, slam, slamlet. Mm-hmm. He's just dunking basketballs. <laughs> when you say he's a black guy, I'm just going to bleep black guy. So it makes it sound like you're saying oh, the yeah. N-word. Just, just smoking a corn cob pipe, letting <laughs> yeah, it fry. Right. Damn it, I just can't. I can't think of Shakespeare plays. What are the Shakespeare plays? Uh, Romeo and Juliet. Well, we have, we have little Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have... Uh, Macbeth. Mm. Macbeth, McDonald's. (laughs) 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 Burger King. (laughs) Uh, shit. What's the one with uh, Rosencrantz and uh? That's Hamlet. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Yeah, yeah. From gang violence. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Okay, Okay. we've all right. We've run out. I'm sorry. I apologize. (laughs) Wait, did we do a Hamlet one? Yeah, Slamlet. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's good at basketball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo. Shout right. out to Josh Shakespeare. Yeah, <laughs> shout out. Shout out guy I've never met who I thought was white. He's a nice guy. I'm yeah. sure he is. Is he doing well in comedy? Yeah, he's doing great. He just did a little tour opening for somebody up oh, and that's down. That's great. Yeah, back to, up to Seattle and back. And uh, yeah, he's figuring it out. He's 21 years old. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's got plenty of... Young cat. Yeah, he's got like 10 years before his life is a failure. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was his age. So instead of like shitting on him, I'll shit on myself. Sure. I thought I had it all figured out. Oh, don't we all? Man, 21, 22. You're like, dude, this shit's easy. Mm-hmm. Bro, I just go. I go to work. I make fucking $8 an hour. Mm-hmm. I come home and I sit by myself and play video games until I got to go to work again. This is the life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember literally. I, we, I was just talking about this on podcast. I remember making seven twenty five an hour. And getting my paycheck at the end of the week, I think for like two hundred dollars. Yeah, and being like, "This is great. This is like most of my rent. I can get Panda Express. This is mm-hmm. fantastic. I can't believe yeah. it." Yeah, I worked a construction job for ten fifty an hour. Yeah, where I was just like the bitch boy who like picked up all the cigarette butts on the yeah the place and yep. just listened to Bill Burr's podcast. You were the you were the lady of the construction yeah. site, dude. I would literally listen lady. to like Fiona Apple on my yeah. iPod Touch. <laughs> I like pre downloaded the albums and stuff. You were the guy oh, of the God. construction Singing site. Singing at the top of your lungs. Yeah. And all the construction dudes are like, yeah. what's this dude singing? They were just like, that uh, boy, that boy ain't right, I tell you. Who's your daddy? <laughs> who's your I daddy? I can't think of a Fiona Apple song to sing right Every now. Every single uh, night. Title. I endure the fight. Little thoughts of my brain. Mm. I don't know. Little farts in my brain? Mm. Little farts in my brain. <laughs> yeah. I just know the That's one. That's my that, rap name. Her f- little farts. Little farts. <laughs> <laughs> I have a chain for you. Actually, yeah. I was gonna give it to you. It's just LF. <laughs> LF. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. This episode's brought to you by Chains.com. Chains.com. Is that a real site? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, well, I don't know. You don't know. I mean, I, I would have uh, put it past any the the amount of podcast ads you see now. No website that you just come up with off the top of your head is ever what you think it is. So if you went to Chains.com, it's probably not the type of chains you're looking for. Slavery. <laughs> Possibly. Damn, my rent used to be one hundred seventy-five dollars. Yeah, my rent used to be one ninety. Dude, when I would work fifty-five hours a week, I would get double overtime, and I was making like sixteen for like that last day. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, that rocked. That did like, rule. My checks every week would be like five hundred fifty dollars, and I'd be like, oh my god, like I could work for two days and make my rent. Yeah, it was insane. I, I was felt like a king. I was nineteen, and I lived in a bunk bed. And my rent was one ninety, and all I did was just get drunk every night, mm-hmm. and then throw up and go to church. Mm-hmm. It was great. That's all I did. My first like house after high school that I lived in with like four hundred people, I think my rent was one twenty, 
And I didn't pay it for six months. Dude, I did that too yeah. because I hated the landlord. And, and I'm like, I'm going to see how long I cannot pay yeah. before they notice. They and it was like eight months. Out. Yeah. And then I just went and got an apartment with another buddy. And that rent for a two bedroom in uh, 2000, maybe 2099, 2000. It was 550 for a two bedroom in Raleigh, North Carolina. Well, now that you're grown up, you realize that their mortgage was probably like a hundred bucks or something yeah. crazy low. The building was built in the 70s. Mm. Right. Yeah. So like yeah, if so they're, they're not getting a $100 check every month, no. they're not even noticing. There's a duplex for sale in my neighborhood right now in Playa and it's a three bedroom, one bath, three bedroom, one bath, top and bottom. Mm. They The owner bought it in 2001 for $153,000. The list, first listing price was $2.27 million. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's insane. One row off the beach, but each unit gets 6,500 a month. Yeah. And they've already remodeled one. It's like, dude, if there was ever a time that I just needed to borrow $2.27 million from someone you know, Mm. who will remain nameless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, I mean, it's crazy. I was, I heard something the other day that was, if you were born between 1940 and 1965, you were on average going to earn 400% higher than your parents' generation did. Just because that was the time that everyone moved off the farms into cities, got these manufacturing jobs, got mm -hmm. these like office administrative type jobs versus everybody who's dirt poor. So it's not only that, like, cause you think like a lot of times like, oh, our generation was the first generation that got fucked with all the housing and yep. wage income, like wage disparity. It, it's not even that, it's, it's, it's the fact that the only people who have had it good are our parents' generation. And that's it. They were born in the perfect time frame yeah. to accumulate massive amounts of wealth and just be completely fine. Right. And now there's a whole industry of people trying to fuck everyone out of their generational wealth. Yeah. There's reverse mortgage companies that'll take your shit. Mm -hmm. It's like if your parents or grandparents didn't pass it down, you're just not going to be able to have any kind of like generational wealth if, you, if you're not inheriting oh, something. No. No, 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 no. On the flip side, though, I have some buddies that have like some advertising agencies in, up north in like San Francisco. They, they're hiring kids right out of school for 120, no experience, 120, mm -hmm. 130, 140. Mm -hmm. And then these kids will work there for like three months. And they're like, I'm going across the street. They offered me 180. It's like, bitch, you got three months of experience. You're making $130,000 a year. Right. And I'm sorry, what are they doing? It's just advertising shit. Yeah. Oh, wow. That is but really, you need to get, get like the fake jobs. Like yeah. I know so many people who are like, I work in tech. They have a work from home job. They work three hours a week. Right. And they make like one, you know, like you said, like 120, 130. And all they do is manage four people in one department. And right. they report to another person to report to. They they send GIFs in Slack. Yeah. And then, yeah, they literally just like, they go to their manager and he's like, how's it going? He's like, it's great. Yep. Rodney's out sick today. Rodney's out sick. This automated yeah. funnel we set up to collect data, it's been collecting it with nobody monitoring it. Mm, right. Everybody's pretended to work, so that's going great. And they're like, great. And then they take it to their boss, right. who's also not working. And then once every year, he goes for another round of VC funding mm. to get an additional $6 million to keep the scam floating for another two years. Right. And you go, I'll get his job in six years when the 100 women have come forward. Right, when the 100 women have come forward, <laughs> who he has locked in a basement in Bulgaria. Chained yeah. up. Chained up. Looking like the mm -hmm. end of uh, fucking uh, the the lady with the spider tattoo or whatever it is. Oh, the lady, the with, lady the dragon, with the spider the tattoo. dragon tattoo. Yeah, the, that's me. I'm your grandpa on a the, podcast. The girl on the metro. Yeah, we were watching the girl on the metro with the spider tattoo. I, I didn't. I didn't care for the rape. I want to say that. Um, <laughs> There's like 900 of those, right? There's like. Oh yeah, the, the woman boy. on the train fucking right. the boy or whatever. Yeah. yeah, the dude that bought a hotel. Yeah, just for mm. just for moms who are like just Viking end yeah. up. Are they all lady based or are there dude ones? I think they're all lady based. I think girl with the dragon tattoo is the only guy based one. Did we just misgender those books? Can we say lady? Uh, should, we do, should we refer to them? I think feminine it's called. Based? I think it's called the girl with the dragon tattoo. It is. I don't the think girl it's, with the dragon you're thinking tattoo. of the lady in the water. Yes, I think of the end of Shyamalan yeah. movie. <laughs> The lady Sorry. in the water. That's a movie? You're thinking of the lady killers. Yeah, with Tom Hanks. My favorite comic. You know what? I, you know what I said the other day is that uh I'm good. full metal jacket <laughs> I said a uh, full metal jacket and the hurt locker should switch names. Hmm. Mm. 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 I, you know what I kinda agree with that on Full Metal Jacket makes perfect sense 
as a name for the Hurt Locker because he's wearing a big jacket. Yeah, and then and but it's not made and, out of metal. No, but it's in Teflon. That's, the, yeah, but I when I watched it, it looked like it was like pots and pans. I always yeah. said <laughs> now, here, here's I always said that Big Mama's house in Norbit should have separate switch the names. Mm. I think that would I be perfect. I can get behind that. I endorse yeah. that. Mm. Cuz you look at Eddie Murphy with that big fat lady mm. and you're like, "Oh, that's Big Mama's house." Mm. Then you look at Big Mama and you're like, "That should be a lady named Norbit." Norbit's so funny, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it. It's like a genius uh, film. Is it? Yeah, it's him like the whole time it's just like Eddie Murphy. Well, you know he plays the big fat lady too, right? Wait, what? Yeah, he I'm plays blown. both. I'm blown away. They do like next. Some... You're gonna tell me he played all the characters of the Nutty <laughs> no, Professor. Dude. I have I've watched it a hundred times. I have no idea how they do it. <laughs> it's like some trick photography thing. It's like magic. But basically, like the whole movie is is like her trying to like rape him. Ah. Uh-huh. And she's like, get over here. And he's just like running. And then she just like runs and jumps and just slams on him and just pancakes him. That's mm. the whole the whole movie is that she rapes him into a marriage. <laughs> and then they show his POV. Am I wrong? No. They show his POV when she's on top of him. Yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah. no a bit, no a bit. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Can you imagine watching and then that there's movie? Really, and then- uh, there's these Chinese people in it that are like, ha chi chang The whole movie. It's crazy. Are they and he also Schneider? plays the Chinese people. Oh, okay. I like that. <laughs> am I wrong? Isaac, am I wrong? He no. plays the Chinese he people plays in every, it. I, and well, it's crazy over the top. I don't I don't know if he plays the Chinese people. Does he? Ah, shit. Hold on. Let me look I it gotta up. I got to look it up. I know but he when, plays the Jewish guy in Coming to America. But can you imagine watching that film and going, I think I'm going to make an entire empire out of ripping this off, Tyler Perry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to build an entire Oprah-sized empire off right. of just... Because every movie that Tyler Perry is, he does the same thing. Yeah, he's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this, but I'm going to make it like lamer somehow. (laughs) I'm going to make it about the struggle. Dude, (laughs) Dude, he plays a... a, Fuck, hold on. Yeah, he plays Respucia. He plays Norbit Albert Rice. Respucia is his big wife. Mm. And then uh, he plays the elderly and cynical orphanage owner mr wong okay and it says here <laughs> the Asian guy? i'm reading this in the chicago Tri- tribune from 2007 it says in parentheses murphy's funniest performance here <laughs> it's wildly inappropriate i gotta swap a battery on this fourth camera real quick. okay oh, do, are we you about to to, die? do we need to take a break for no me and jace will Roll carry it. it all right so anyway i'm here to cancel eddie murphy right that's my campaign yeah i don't like him because he had sex with that trans lady mm-hmm. in his car yeah yeah yep yeah. that's right uh, yeah, if he had, if he bought her a nice hotel room and treated her like a lady, like he should have, then I would have liked it. The lady in the Corolla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the lady in the water, it's just a guy by a pool jacking off mm-hmm. to a lady. Dude, I remember the other day I at a I was in my uh room mm-hmm. in my house in college and I was smoking cigarettes and I was doing I had like an old record player. You remember that old Yeah, yeah. big antique record player i had yeah and ben, I, had, ben had like an, a hundred pound record player that he got in a state sale it was huge for like a hundred bucks yeah dollar a pound yeah pretty <laughs> much <laughs> and i was i was spinning records on this old thing from like 1946 and i came to i'm smoking cigarettes in my room i have no idea how i got there i'm like i have like a 40 duct tape to my hand mm-hmm. i must have taken i have no idea what i took that night i don't know if it was vivance i don't know if it was xanax i don't know what i took right but i'm smoking cigarettes in my house which is a huge no-no and then i'm i'm like what the fuck is going on because i'm spinning these lcd sound system records and then i walk out into the kitchen and there's a whole party going on in my house <laughs> apparently i invited a bunch of people over and i'm just going crazy in my own room and i walk out and i'm like Woo! And I'm just like jumping on the table. I had a memory of that the other day. Did I'm just you, like I came to and I had I'm throwing a party at my own home, and I had no clue I was even throwing a party. Like you live there, or this is your house you grew up in. With your no, parents? this w- no no no. This was my house I lived in in college. Oh wow! Yeah, you remember. woke up from a blackout to a party you were throwing. Like, basically, <laughs> yeah. what happened is I started drinking earlier that day, and I blacked out and came to at a party I was throwing in my own house. Right. You wa- was- you watched Project X and it really changed your life. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, "This is going to be my future." From dude, now on. I wonder when I saw that. I wonder if I was thought it was cool or not. I'm trying to think if I'd even drank at that point. Well, you guys liked partying, but you liked being shitty about it. Yeah, because you were guys. I remember you guys were at the, the guys at the party because me and Ben went to the same college, but yeah. I was two years older than him. Ben's friends were always the guys at the college where it's like, "Guys, come on, we're trying to get drunk and harass women." Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> like we don't need a we don't need an Edward Forty hands mm-hmm. and pull our pants down and run around mm-hmm. and shit. And we're wearing like super tight shorts. Yeah, you guys Hawaiian are wearing, shirts. You guys are like all dressed team. like shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, ironic facial hair. Ironic facial and hair. Just making this face. You guys are all like, did you see the newest Mac DeMarco YouTube video? <laughs> <laughs> Pulling cigarettes at like your third and fourth collar. Dude, yeah, me exactly. and my friend Nathan uh, tried to play 40 hands as many days in a row that we could. You know what 40 hands is? Yeah, you tape, duct tape 40, Edward 40 hands. hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did that uh, with like timed and everything. Like you can't just chill on it and sip. Like you got to do it under, I think it was 20 minutes. 20 Two, minutes? 240. Well, you yeah. can't let them get no. hot. Because then it gets gross when they get hot. That is gross. Yeah. But 80 ounces in 20 minutes? Mm. I mean, you kind of almost have to before it hits your bladder or you're just going to piss yourself. Right? Yeah, you really are. Yeah. So yeah. then at the end, what you usually do is you you go like this, like a baby, like the way a baby dances, and you shake the 40s off of your hands or you crack them together like that and hope you don't like slice your wrists open. That's dangerous. And then you stick your fingers down your own mouth and you vomit. You make yourself throw up. So you put your two fingers back here. Yeah, just hold and You, you got to hold it wiggling, down is the thing. Keep wiggling and keep throwing up on your hand and just you keep going. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. Because if you take going. your hand out, you're going to stop throwing up. But why? So okay, can, we and it. the reason you got to throw up so is can, because if you let all that alcohol, that hard, there's voodoo in like OE and still reserve and stuff. There's like some dark magic in that shit. Uh, whatever. Still reserve, <laughs> still reserve specifically is oh, like some, yeah. like, no, no, no. there's something weird yeah. going on. I don't know what they put in it. When you it's crack crazy. a steel reserve, the hangover starts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, well, it's, it's homeless people juice. Mm. It yeah. kind of makes you homeless. A little that bit. being said, though, I can drink a shitload of Mad Dog 2020 and have no problem. Mad Dog 2020 is different. Yeah. yeah. That's like your Boone's farm. Yeah. You're like 19, wine. 19 year old girl, yeah. you know, yeah. about to get you're, harassed you're for the an first athlete, time. Like your body's metaphysiology is so elite that you can just like drink whatever you want. Right. You're just feel shitting it. it. You're shitting this neon liquid out of your body yep. real quick. Um, Those were the days. But yeah, you got to throw up because otherwise you're going to be way too drunk and you're just going to feel sick like immediately. Well, why even do it? Well, I remember we used to go. Well, this is the challenge. The challenge is how much can I hurt myself? Yeah. We used to play that. We didn't have a time limit, but it was like you got to get it done or you're going to piss yourself so that you're trying to beat your bladder, but you also didn't want to chug it, you know? Yeah, it's it's yeah, there's yeah. a lot of strategy no, no, that goes into it. There's yeah. a ton of way. It's like it's like uh, it's that movie, The Card Counter, mm. except you're just drinking uh, old English, right? Basically, my, my preferred game would be beer. St- <clears throat> excuse me, beer staffs. What's beer staffs? You take when you finish a beer, everybody's got to roll a duct tape, mm. and you tape it to the bottom of your oh, next yeah. beer. I'd play that too. Oh, okay. And, and then, you do case races. Yeah. And so between you and another guy, you try to kill thirty beers the fastest. Right. Not to be confused with race cases, which yeah. is a whole another. <laughs> we a whole we did. Other thing. My friends, we were really into King's Cup, King's Cup, Flip Cup, and beer pong. Mm. I could never. I can't get into Flip Cup. I love the beer pong. Flip cups like okay. I'll just do it if everybody else is doing it, but it's not. It's not too fun. We played beer pong. It's like a old good game school. for like you to play with like men and women or whatever. Yeah, yeah. We would play beer pong. We're like no wash cup. Oh yeah, ball hits the ground. Doesn't matter. Right in there. If you played inside, you could zing it off the wall for two cups. Really? Oh yes. Yeah, we best. did. We did bounces. You could bounce it. Bounces are two. Yeah. 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 Oh, th- I think the wall might have been three then. Right. Some extra. We did bounces, and then if you caught like the bounce back, you had to do behind the back a rodeo shot. Yeah. Oh, oh if we caught the ball, uh, then you lost a cup. Like if you tried to bounce it and we caught it. Oh, okay. What we would do is if it bounced and we caught it, we'd get to fuck your mom. Yeah. Oh, right. Years. <laughs> so that's where my mom was all of high school. Mm-hmm. We'd She's all... driving <clears throat> from North yeah. Carolina. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just on a 17 hour road trip. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. They caught the ball, honey. <laughs> I'll be right out. I'll be back in four days. Yeah. Your mom would fucking ride me in uh, Psychology 101 in the front row. Jesus. She's a big she, whore. She told me. She showed me the photo like, album. She was like, this is your first cat. Right. This is that time you went to Disneyland. This is me fucking Ben in college. <laughs> I'd be like trying to look at the board and she's like fucking riding me. Yeah. The professor didn't care. No. My dad didn't either. He took the picture. <laughs> yeah. I remember one of the best moments uh, in college was... Just like I caught a bounce back. One guy heckled me about it. We were playing with my friend Ross and he heckled me about it. And then I said, fuck you, Ross. And I sunk the behind the back. Wow. wow. As I said, fuck you, Ross. And then I just walked away like that and punched a hole in the wall. 
of this <laughs> this garage. You peaked in college. That we were in. Yeah. Oh yeah, you it's all it's all been way downhill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I had to hang out at one of those things now, I'd like take my own life. Oh yeah, oh. I, would, I would kill everybody in there. Well, they're so bad now. Kids don't party like 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 the '80s college parties. I think were the height of how parties were ever going to go. And then '90s kids were just you know we had ecstasy, so there was that. Right. But then, like, Wait, you guys didn't have drugs where you might OD. We all knew people that would like friend no. of a friend OD'd on fentanyl and all that shit. Dude, ecstasy in the '90s makes Molly today look like Tylenol. Yeah, because it would. You had the ecstasy in the '90s where it would it would trick your basically heating system to mm-hmm. to keep heating up. And we had raves without air conditioning. Right, kids were just dropping left and right. They would just die of like heat stroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a lot of we had that was fentanyl. When we were in not college. really our thing, but as as I was getting older, I would hear more and more about it. Yeah, more about fentanyl. Yeah. Do people do fentanyl and, and, on purpose, or is it just like, shit you put in coke? This person OD'd. This comic OD'd. Like as you get old, as I got older, and I think just because as times changed, more. I mean, you can look at a graph. It's not like I'm making it up. It's not like it's purely anecdotal. You can look at a graph. Like overdose deaths have been uh, rising every year. You are goddamn right. Yeah, I think I think to answer your question, I think fentanyl was invented by a drug company, um, and then dealers started putting it in coke because you can you can step on your shit. Heard that in a movie. Mm-hmm. You can step on your shit, put a little bit of fentanyl in it because fentanyl is so strong, it'll make it. Right. People be like, "Oh, this is great coke," but the problem is, it's so easy to add too much fentanyl, right? And then people just start ODing off of it because a literal dab will kill you. Yeah, like like literally, like I think it's like. It's like a quarter of a penny of fentanyl yeah. will kill kill a man. That's the pro- it's just the the mix, <clears throat> the mix technique. Like if they just put it in there and they don't mix it and spread right. it out over the whole batch. And these are guys making yeah. cocaine, so it's it's not going to be you the know, most upstanding citizens it's, we have. It's not yeah, it's not Walter White, future senator. Right. Well, that's probably is true. <laughs> doctors, future doctors and lawyers. Yeah, that might be true. <laughs> Some little kid just selling coke out of like his Columbia dorm or something. Yeah, I could see that. I worked at uh, this apartment complex across the street from Duke University, and this kid was making IDs out of his apartment. Really? Yeah. So I went in there. I was doing maintenance at the time. I went in there, and he had a literal like mountain of cocaine on his uh, coffee table. Jesus. And just printers everywhere. A couple of days later, like two black SUVs pull up with like the dudes on the outside, like, the <laughs> running boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you fuck around with IDs the secret service comes to get you. Yeah, because that's their department. That's it. Yeah. Oh, because it's identity theft? Yep. And that's they, funny. they took that dude away. We never saw him again. <laughs> He's in Guantanamo right yeah. now. Dude kids were weird, though, because if they won, it was it was the opposite, right? So if they lost a basketball game, they would come home and burn their $5,000, $10,000 couches. Uh-huh. But if they won, they would just come home and study for their tests. Hmm. It was like, like the weirdest thing I ever saw. Yeah, I mean, they are like a universally hated group, right? They indeed are. The Duke yeah. fans, yeah. yeah. It's not great. They got Ken Jong though, so that's good for them. Yeah. They got the mass Singer. Why, I thought Ken went to um, Chapel Hill. No, he went to he went to uh, Duke Did because he, really? he, was a, he was a doctor. Yeah. They have the better uh, medical university. You ever watch the Ken Jong shows? What? Do you watch? Wait, who are you talking about? Well, are you no, who, talking what, about the what, actor? What shows? Are you talking about Ken Jong? Yeah, from yeah, I thought it was Ken Jong. It's Ken Jong. It's Ken Jong Il. Yeah, right. <laughs> the third. <laughs> Wait, who the hell are you guys talking the about? The guy from, from the, the hangover. hangover. Yeah, the little guy that pops out of the trunk. Yeah, the Ken Jong. Yeah, it's not Ken Jong. Yeah, have you seen the Why Ken Jong? Ring, shows? A, ring a gong after you say it. His Jong. What? Have you seen the Ken Jong show? <laughs> I'm not from where his have you seen North Carolina. <laughs> no, I'm not each other. He's got a southern accent. Yeah, yeah but when you read the stuff, you sound it out. Right, sure. Sound right, it out. Right. <laughs> you sound it out. Right, right. But have you seen his shows? What's What show? No. Uh, he's hosts a wide variety of shows. I've seen The Masked Singer. He also hosts a lip syncing show where oh, two, yeah, two think, people yeah. come out. Is pro- it called Don't Get the Words, Jung? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Two people come out and uh they go uh they go oh so this guy like there's all these different occupations so it's like uh it's like a guess who mm. kind of or like clue i guess where it's like there's a plumber doctor whatever and they're all in these outfits but they don't speak and then uh uh, uh kim jiang's up there with a the mic and he goes all right uh pick two and then they go okay i'm gonna pick the plumber and then the fisherman 
And then so they both come out and they go, okay, who do you think's the best, the best, uh, the real singer is? Because one guy's going to be a fake and then one guy's going to be real. But okay. here's the catch. They lip sync to their own voice. So they all talk about it. And then the plumber like comes out and he's lip syncing to maybe his voice or uh-huh. maybe somebody else's voice. Okay. And then the next person, the the uh, other the basketball player lady or whatever, she'll then limp sync to her song. And then they all go, and it's like Cheryl Hines is sitting around. They're like, <laughs> I think the basketball player is the real singer. Right. And uh, but uh, so it's just like the uh, and, and then finally they they guess, and then uh, the guy uh, then belts out like you 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 try to see if he's right, and then he starts singing. But every time the best singer they always go like it's like a it's like a black janitor and then like the other guy the other lady will be like it's like a a big fat woman mm, gross who, who like uh is a like fast food employee or something okay and you have to like guess and these are made up occupations by the way sure. I, I, was, I was about to say the only jobs you can think of are in richard scary books. <laughs> 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 you're like so a big uh, worm in an apple comes yeah. out he and, starts singing and then the guy will be like ah, i don't know uh i think it's the big old fat white lady right and then like it's clearly not her sure <laughs> it's no it's always like you're gonna go against like this black guy in his late 20s have you seen like what are you are you crazy have you seen the show uh is it cake with mikey day oh on it's, yeah it's the same show but it's dude, just with cake it's yeah good. it's cake you yeah. sent that to me and i almost broke my phone oh dude i i watched uh, i was talking to a girl on the internet like i was gonna go on a date with her and i was like we were about to go on a date the next day and we were having a nice conversation i was like what are you doing and she's like i'm watching this new show called uh, is it cake it's really good and i was just, i canceled the day <laughs> because she liked is it cake that might be a little Seinfeldy mm. shallow, but it's still it's like you have to have like a worm in your brain. Yeah, she liked um, the cake show. She liked the cake show. <laughs> was it cake? It was cake. Have you seen it where they saw into yeah. a shoe? Yeah, and they go, ah, oh, it's cake. But, but <laughs> there's a bowling ball. I guess wrong every time. Yeah, the sh- the show is where they go. Yeah, I guess it was cake, and then they all put a gun <laughs> under their chin <laughs> and just poof. cake splatter. They, they just I, miss, dude. I love yeah, the the gun was a cake. <laughs> Dude, I love reading. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I love reading headlines where they go. Uh, like you read a headline and uh, about like Hollywood now, mm-hmm. and like so much of it, it like doesn't mean anything at all. Right. Not that anything in the other world would mean anything either. Like mm-hmm. I'm not trying to bash these guys, but they're like, ah, a sad end of an era. Beck Bennett has left <laughs> SNL. Right. And we're all supposed to like drop. Like I'm supposed to like I'm holding a plate of food and I like drop it like, in my living room. <sighs> Back. Oh my lord! Oh God! <laughs> Who's gonna help make the worst thing I've ever seen in my life? <laughs> Who's gonna make the pro COVID vaccine wrap? Dude, did you see what uh, Kimmel just did? No, uh, it was this big. Uh, he tries to go every time there's a shooting. Kimmel tries to go viral. Dude, he try. He's crying like he cries every episode. Every episode, he does. yeah, over every shooting. Yeah, yeah. He tried to go viral again over the Texas shooting, and then his whole big bit was a. Uh, uh, it was Ted Cruz was Cruzella DeVille. Ooh. Ugh. Not great. I mean, it's just, it just and sucks. For those so much reasons, ass. I'm out. Right. Yeah. He just comes out as blackface Charles Barkley again. <laughs> again? Oh, hello there. <laughs> Have you not seen him back no. in the day? No, it was Carl Malone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he did no. the man show, he did a sketch where he's playing Carl Malone. He's like, oh, hello there. I love playing the basketball. <laughs> and then he had to apologize and be like, it was a different time. I didn't realize I had to pretend to like black people back then. <laughs> I swear I'm not racist. I'm not just saying this to keep my TV show. I don't know who I am anymore. I don't know. I'm a. I'm almost like an MK Ultra plant that uh, CBS has uh, wiped my entire personality. Well, when you're on that many, I mean, God, God bless the man. But when you're on that many antidepressants, you don't know who the. Hell, oh, yeah, you don't know where you are. He's anymore. got a. He's just got classic. You don't know SSRI what you believe. Personality. Yeah, you yeah. have no idea. You, no idea. You look at the in the mirror late at night, and you just start bawling like a sheep. Right. Yeah. You. He looks in the mirror like that scene in Ex Machina, where and then he just starts cutting into his wrist just to make sure he's not a robot. Yeah. Because he doesn't know. He has no idea. Yeah. He should be killed. But he, he is a robot, to talk. so he just sews himself back up. Yeah. He might be. Who guys knows? guys like that in their older years they just start clucking like chickens and making goat noises mm-hmm. they don't even they have no clue who they are anymore no they no. have no idea it's either, yeah they and then they uh, some of them get like really into like weird sex stuff just to feel anything mm-hmm. anymore 
Yeah. Probably like goes down to Chinatown, just beats women for money. Oh, who was the I didn't dude even... that was eating pieces of his girlfriend? Army what? Hammer? Yes. Yeah. Like, well, those type of guys. And he's back. He just did an uh, uh, Amazon Prime movie. Did he really? It was like the murder on the River Nile or something. Oh, yeah. So oh, the Gal Gadot here, movie. So here's what's funny is the, the, the black lady in that, everybody's more mad at her than Army Hammer because she's anti-vax. <laughs> she the lady from Black Panther? Yeah, her name is... You're going to screw this up so badly. Lady... <laughs> lady Godiva. The movie. <laughs> lady Madonna. It's something... I forget her name, but yeah. anyway, everybody's mad yeah. at her. Yeah, because she's very anti-vax. Because she's anti-vax. So nobody even cares about the Army Hammer thing. Mm. Isn't COVID over? I thought it was over. I think I, the reports say it's like kind of back the same uh, the way it was. In terms yeah, of it's, it's back. I mean, it's, you know, it's whatever. I, I thought there would be a fucking parade. Like, there would be an end date. Because there wasn't really a good, there was a solid start date. Like, we all know March 13th in LA was when we got locked down. Right. And then it was just kind of like, oh, see you in six weeks. And then like two years later, it was just like, oh, you kind of don't have to wear a mask on a plane now. Mm-hmm. But there's, I thought it would be like, let's have like a global party to celebrate the fact that we all survived yeah. COVID. And I, it was just kind of puttered out. I think because it's like everybody in America has stopped quarantining in stages. Like yeah. in LA, people stopped quarantining three days ago. Yeah. But in Texas, they stopped quarantining a week after COVID started. And in Florida, they, nev- they were like, what's a quarantine? They were like, what is COVID? Yeah, yeah exactly. They're on like a big oxygen tank. Yeah. <laughs> they, their legs were removed, but mm-hmm. they don't know what COVID is. So, yeah, I don't know. They said it's supposed to come back again in the fall. But who, I mean, we got this monkey pox, which I like because it's spread in the gay community. It's mm. kind of like OG AIDS. <laughs> they brought it back. They're like, listen, AIDS was great. We're just going to bring that back. By the way, do you keep seeing that people are like, there's no way in hell I will ever take the monkey pox vaccine? Are Which, people already doing do, that? But do you know what the vaccine for monkeypox is? What? Is the smallpox vaccine. Really? Yes. Huh. Didn't we all get that when we were kids? Exactly. So you've already taken the monkeypox vaccine. Correct. But you can still get monkeypox. I guess, yeah. Yeah. If you're sucking and fucking all the time. Actually, I actually have no idea. Guilty God, as charged. God, goddamn bathhouses. <laughs> That's just oh. something I read on Twitter when someone was clapping back to Candace Owens. Oh, sure. Right. No, apparently it does spread through... Monkeypox does spread mostly through sexual contact, is what they say. So it's pretty much an STD. Uh, kind of. Yeah, kind of. I mean, by the letter of the law. Then. Yeah, sexually transmitted disease. I yeah. guess that is true. Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to imagine what the Cruzella Deville uh, bit is. I didn't. Cl- I couldn't click on it, but I've been trying to think what it is. Like I'm wondering if like the Dalmatians are like the kids in the school or something, and he's coming in. With like making them wear, I'm like, sure it's guns treated. I'm sure he treated no the tragedy idea. with the utmost respect. Is it is it 101 round magazines instead? And he's Cruzella. I mean, I think you're you're blowing that writers room away right now. They're, I think they're, they're like, like, don't stop. They're like, don't, they're like, <laughs> they're like, no, it's gold. Cool. There's a guy with a big Pause. cigar like type. Someone comes yeah. in with sandwiches. No, shut the yeah. fuck up. He's on a roll. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I literally can't. I can't think like that. No, you just I. You need to come up with whatever you think it is. Ben has sent me so many fucking dog shit late night sketches that make me want to blow my brains <laughs> out. He's like, check this out, and it's you know the Jimmy Kimmel. Well, it's the rule of nine. Do you know the rule of nine? What's that? If you have nine ideas, you probably have one good one. So you right. Just have to shit out all your bad ideas because they're blocking the good ideas. Right. Well, they just do all the nine bad ones and then throw the good <laughs> one out because <laughs> it it is dog shit. Do you think that they want to ban abortion in Texas so that there's more targets to shoot at in the schools? Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's like a little one of those little shooting galleries with the dots yeah. going past. It's the bullet lobby. It's like, we got to ban abortion. Right. Every kid in the school is a potential We've victim. killed too many kids. There's a, out. there's a level in Call of Duty where you do a mass shooting in an airport. Seriously? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. What, what is it called? No Russian? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's is no it Russian. So people go, oh, he went no Russian mode because it's a map yeah. <laughs> in Call of Duty. <laughs> wow. But isn't every battle royale essentially a mass shooter? Like you're trying to kill the other 150 dudes. Um, but this, one is, this un- one is specifically you're walking into a mall and then there's a bunch of people you're like, no, we're innocent. And then you shoot all of them. Okay, that's a little do, far. Yeah, yeah, you're doing a, a straight up mass shooting. Yeah, it came yeah. under a lot of fire. Hmm. Yeah, literally. Yeah, <laughs> it is crazy that game doesn't get more uh, heat because, like, you could play as the Nazis, 
in uh, some versions of the game. Mm-hmm. Right. You can do mass shootings in the game. Uh-huh. And uh, it's really a, a Pepe's dream, really. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't there in that game they also made they tried to what well, they wanted to be inclusive, but they were making like black Nazis and people got mad. Or am I making that up? Yeah, because everything was inclusive, so you could play as like all the races on every side. Right. So if you were like if you were playing for the side of the Nazis, like in Team Deathmatch, you could your character could be Could you be Chinese Nazi? I guess like technically I'm what pretty sure. What a great sure. combo. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Which I think those that does exist though. Chinese Nazis? Yeah, pretty sure. Hmm. Well, I mean, well, I have no follow up no, bit or either. joke. Yeah. I, mean, or, I didn't think of anything. I didn't think of anything. The Nazis like pretty, like they scissor sometimes, right? Yeah, they're kind uh, of closely like socialists and communism. You're kind of like a little related. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they're the same thing to me. <laughs> same thing that I think it's a bunch of junk, brother. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> growing up in the South, y'all probably remember this mm-hmm. socialism, God damn it. Yeah, no, I haven't been. Southern either. accent, not bad, by the way. It's real. As people that grew up in the South, we can. So did I. Oh, hey, yeah. He's from North Carolina. I, I grew up over there a little bit. You know, I grew up with my mom and daddy. They probably you know, so, said too many. So you guys words. have like the Seth Galifianakis Southern accent. He's from North Carolina. Yeah. 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 So here's kind of like a kind of like a that type. There's of, a lot of eyes. And, and don't you guys e. have kind of like an effeminate Southern accent? A little, a little bit. bit. Even the guys are just like, hey, man, I'm going to go up over there. And, right. You know, we're going to drink some beers. Yeah. And, um, you know, the wife and I, we're going to go up over there and smoke some cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed people always praise actors in like Southern films. Like a Benedict Cumberbatch or somebody will try to do a Southern accent. Good luck. And like modern day, and they'll do like an old Southern belt. Yeah. They're like, like well, the 1800s. I do. I just, uh, uh, it's 2011. <laughs> just somebody, Sam. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do. I say, I do. I say. I do declare here in Galveston. <laughs> and then the ladies, they do the worst accent. Oh, yeah. In these movies. Have you seen these women? Yeah. In these movies? We should in, be enraged. They do them. horrible jobs. You know how they have to cast an actual like quadriplegic to play a quadriplegic now? Mm-hmm. If you're not Southern, you shouldn't be able to take a Southern role. Exactly. Mm. Mm-hmm. Just do, uh, I can't, are there any Southern actors? Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, Matthew he's McConaughey. from Uvalde. Is he really? Yeah. What? That's insane. Yeah. Interesting. That's crazy. Weirdly enough, I learned that like two weeks ago. Huh. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Do you think Mark Wahlberg's going to make one of those movies about Uvalde? Where it's always like the response to the tragedy, like Deepwater Horizon mm. and Patriots and, Day. And or the Boston bombing. Yeah. Just him outside you like, guys, why don't you go in there? I don't understand. You guys, you guys, listen. Okay, I'm yeah. going to go down there and I'm going to fix it. But yeah. I can't because I got to stop by the Whataburger real quick. And I got to talk to my freaking brother. <laughs> guys, it's been 90 minutes. We got to go inside. I don't get it. Listen, if this lady asked me if I could go inside one more fucking time, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm losing my fucking we're hog tie that bitch. I don't have any of my own children in there. So I'm not going in until the freaking SWAT so team gets here. <laughs> Listen, we got to go open a Wahlburgers, guys. I don't even have the key to the door. How am I supposed to get in there if I don't have the key to the door? <laughs> Dude, you know what's great, by the way? Is the, the heartwarming people for uh, the heartwarming story for people in Texas mm-hmm. is uh, they go, oh, wow. The, uh, the nearby Whataburger employees in nearby towns drove 34 miles to Uvalde to take over the shifts of the Whataburger employees. So they could um, mourn right. uh, people. They not that Waterberg was like, "Hey, take a day." <laughs> yeah, it was like, "Just shut down the water." Yeah, Waterberg's like, "If your ass ain't at that fryer, yeah. you're canned." Yeah, asshole. and all those cops that didn't do anything were probably being served by the Waterberg. Right, employees. of course, all those fat dumbass cops. Man, did, can I say something real quick? About yeah, the go cops? off, go off, King. So first of all, <laughs> I looked into this the other day. Supposedly, police officers are 15 times more likely to commit domestic abuse than other people. What? Did you know this? That doesn't sound like cops that I know. I Someone tweeted at me. They go, because uh, I posted a screenshot of that. Mm-hmm. They go, yeah, but cops have to, they're like first responders on scenes. It's like in this situation, they what, what was the point of that? Right. Uh, they literally cause more harm than if they didn't show exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. If 9-11 happened in Texas, they would uh, they would have showed up and like arrested first responders yeah, as yeah. they were running into the building. Yeah, yeah. They would have been like billy clubbing firefighters. Yeah, like tasing shit. them. They would have been shooting the falling man <laughs> as he's coming down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got one. <laughs> well, I even heard there was one like they went in. They're like, is there any kids in here? I don't know if this is true. This might be fake news, but they're like, 
Is there any it's kids real. in there? And then one kid was like, I'm here. And then they just shot the kid. Yeah, he yeah. goes, yell He's, if you need help. Yeah. And he said, help. And they were like, bang. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Oops. We Oops. grew up with people like this, though. I mean, the yeah. dumbest. Dumbest. I mean, most boring. The biggest dorks we knew became sheriffs. That They tell stories where they're just like, and then this happened. And then this other oh, thing Oh, they tell happened, stories like me? And then this the happened. The end. And then this. Well, they literally be like, we went to the 7-Eleven. And I tried to get the spicy beef jerky, but they only had the regular beef jerky. So I got the regular beef jerky and a packet of hot sauce, and I ate them to, to between each other. And I think they changed the flavor right. of the hot sauce because it was slightly more spicy than before. And now that guy <laughs> it gets to legally kill me. He got elected sheriff. Yeah, he got elected sheriff. There were people dude. dumber than him. Right. <laughs> dude, we played golf on in high school with this kid who ended up becoming one of these like sheriff types. And he would be he would like tell us stories like after like we'd have to drive back like three hours after the tournament with him. And he would just like his it would be a 40 minute long story. of yeah. Like he would go he would recap his entire round. He'd be like on the first tee I hit into a bush. <laughs> oh, and my then God. I hit it into another bush. <laughs> I used to play poker with guys like lake, that. Yeah. And then I hit it in another oh. bush. You know exactly what we're talking the about. The whole way home from the casino, there's like those like, you know, mentally special guys. They're like, hey, you see that 13th hand when that guy had jack seven and I had kings. But then he came over the flop with the two timer. And I was like, oh, shit. And I pushed all in and then he shoved. And I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't know any of the hands I had. Right. Why would I know the fucking hands that you had? Let alone care about whatever happened right. to you. Did you win money? Yeah. I'm happy for you. Did you lose? Sorry. Yeah. That's all. That's it. I mean, what the fuck did they do at Police Academy? I don't know. Do they literally just like practice going through drive throughs I think it's and like ordering food. I think it's literally like the movies. <laughs> I think there's I a the big solution. black guy who pulls the seat <laughs> out of the car so he can fit it in. Another guy who does special effects noises. <laughs> and Steve Gutenberg's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's one guy going. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was amazing. Oh, Michael Winslow? Oh, my God. He's great. Dude. Have I, you oh, seen him uh, do Led Zeppelin? Yeah. With yeah. the guitars? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. He does the drums, too, right? He does Whole lot of Love. He does the entire song. Wow. Yeah, it's great. We, there isn't another... There's not a modern day version of that. Maybe Pablo Francisco is the closest one, but, yeah, he, but he's the he same doesn't... age. Yeah, he's that's fucking true. super old. That's true. He's been doing movie guy voice for forty years. Right. <laughs> he's. Been, it is funny that he will still do movie guy voice. Yeah, and that hasn't been in movies for I think like thirty five years. Right, and yeah. then he goes back because now he's transitioned to Transformers, mm -hmm. and that's the same voice as movie guy voice. <laughs> it was a Transformer. I'm a Transformer. <laughs> okay, dude. I think I don't think I even remember when trailers had that voice. I only know that voice from comedians referencing that voice. It, the only reason I know this is because I dated a producer that hired movie voice of uh, actor dudes. Okay, and I think I was dating her in 2013, and she was still paying guys like 80 grand for really? an hour. Yeah, really, mm -hmm. dude. So check this out: 40.7 percent of police officers are obese. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. And here, here's the other thing I found. This is the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. I had no idea this was a thing. The U.S. Supreme Court has made it clear that law enforcement agencies are not required to provide protection, are not required to provide protection to the citizens who are forced to pay the police for their services. In the cases the Shaney versus Winnebago and town of Castle Rock versus Gonzalez, the Supreme Court has ruled that police agencies are not obligated to provide protection of citizens. In other words, police are well within their rights to pick and choose when to intervene to protect the lives and property of others, even when a threat is apparent. Yeah, and don't they get like 40% of like the government budget or whatever, like from most cities? Like, I, I think, mean, that, I think what is the point? 40% of LA's budget goes to the cops. I think that's true. So if the, oh, at least this yeah, law, the place looks like a shithole. This law means if someone pulls a gun on me and there's a cop there, uh -huh. he's legally legally he can just walk away. Well, that's what they were saying at Uvalde. They were like, legally, we don't, we're not required to go in there. And it's like, well, what is your purpose other than to go in? Then there? why legally do I have to pay taxes? Yeah, why are we buying you tanks? Battering rams, full body armor. And apparently all of that is just to defend themselves against the teachers that want to go in and and the, the parents that want to go in and like yeah, save their kids. Exactly. Like I'm not a defund the, I'm not a abolish Today the I am. police guy. But I don't know the point anymore. But yeah, there, I think, I think there's, I've known so many cops who are fucking like fake tough guy pussies because they get to walk around with a gun 
and be like, well, I protect and serve. And it's like, all right, dude, you give out traffic tickets, you're fat as shit, mm. and you're just weird about everything. Mm -hmm. And that's all you know. I <laughs> yeah, know about you're you. You're weird as shit. Yeah, and you're weird as shit. Yeah. I figured out the solution. What? We make all enrolled military members do two years of teaching after their military service. Okay. Mm. All right. Or right after basic training when they're super fresh. Right. Then they got to do been, two years of teaching before, before, they've got before the, they get shipped off. Before they got the PTSD. And now, because we have a teacher shortage, but we don't have any shortage of people signing up to go into the military. So right. everybody that signs up for the military, got to be a teacher for two years. Right. And then you can get your money for college. And then they're just busting those kids' asses. Yeah. <laughs> but they're like, who's going to go into a school and shoot it up if yeah. everybody's a trained Marine? That's also going to fix our fat kids' problem because they'll be doing push-ups and mm -hmm. running all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And then they'll have the elite kids in school that are like the SEAL team. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're killing two birds with one stone here. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I think I fixed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Granted, I'm not an expert. I just, those cops are fucking pussies and I think they should all be fired and not get their pension. And should probably face jail time, to be honest. Mm. Because that was disgusting. I wonder if anybody's going to try to like kill them. No. <laughs> People are madder than hell, man. Yeah, but aren't they just letting this go in Texas? They're like, They're, oh, they literally they did a, a press conference problem. this morning and they uh, the cops said, uh, they go, well, the teacher shouldn't have left the back door open, I guess. Yeah, Ted Cruz said that. Yeah. So it been, should be harder to get on campus. Well, he said that, but literally the the Texas DPS or whatever the hell, they're like, yeah, that, that they basically blamed a teacher. They said, well, the teacher shouldn't have left this back door. Properly. By the way, there was a resource officer on site when the guy walked into the school and he just fucking ran away. And the police, also, they tried to cover everything up. They lied. They said he was confronted when he went into school. Not mm -hmm. true. They lied and said they went immediately when that was misproven. They said that they couldn't get into the room because the door was locked and there was no key, mm. which was also not true. And I think the guy who ended up shooting him was a retired border agent who drove fucking 40 minutes to get to the scene, went in with his own gun and then shot the guy. So it's like basically your job was just done by some old guy who came from fucking, mm. you know, IHOP that morning. A good guy with a gun. A good guy with a gun. Exactly. But there's <laughs> that shows that the, a good guy with a gun is sometimes 40 miles away. Right. <laughs> well, that means we should all have guns. Right. <laughs> it's just a distance problem. Yeah, I don't I don't have any answers. I just thought those guys were disgusting. Really? It's just like. But just, what kind of high-level operators did we just think we were fat. dealing with in Uvalde? No, no, but everywhere you go, they're fat fucking retards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you never meet a guy who's like, you know, he's not like reading Dostoevsky or something. Like, he's like a fat fucking retard. Yeah, with the fucking weird shaved head up into the, the flat top guy. With the sports clips haircut. Sports clip, and then the wraparound shades with the mustache. Mm. Just standing, like, just ruining uh, little league softball or t-ball games everywhere. It seems the only uh, thing they really want to do is just make people feel small. Yeah, well, I think it's I think it's a problem where you have an organization like that that attracts people who want to abuse power. Like every person I've known who's become a cop has been a fucking nerd who wants to have to have people respect him. Mm. You know, right? And I'm sure they're going to give them respect, or they're going to take it from you. Yeah, exactly. Or they can legally shoot you. You know. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of times I've been pulled over by a fucking short cop who just like fucking threw his fucking um, authority around just over nothing. It was like, I could give you a ticket right now. $600 ticket I could give to you. I like, play into right. it now because I don't have time for that shit. Yeah, just like now give like, it to me. I don't care. They're like, do you know why I pulled you over? And I'm like, well, I was probably doing something inappropriate, sir. Can you educate me? I sure would like to correct my behavior. Mm -hmm. And they're like, they start to diffuse like right away. And then they're like, well... You, you know, you're doing this and that. I was like, oh, Lord. I, I certainly didn't realize I was doing all that. Officer, I apologize. I'm very sorry for disrespecting your authority. Yeah. And then they just deflate even more. See, I've, I've done that. And I've still had cops. I'm not like, I'm not like, you know, fucking putting a little constitution out the window and being like, I have rights. I don't have to. Sovereign citizenship. I'm not doing sovereign yeah. citizenship. But I've literally had, I, it was like fucking when I first moved here, I was just making a right at a red light, which I thought you could do. There was somebody in a crosswalk fucking 30 feet away from me. And apparently the law is you cannot turn if there's anybody in the crosswalk anywhere, which I didn't oh, know. I didn't know that either. Cop pulls me over, comes over to the fucking passenger side. Like I have like a, my car is like full of Doritos bags and like fucking cigarette butts. Mm -hmm. Comes over to the passenger side. He's like, 
He's like, you didn't you see got that an extra sandwich in there? Yeah, he's like, you got a little something for daddy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I swear to God, he was this tall. He came over. He's like, he's like, uh, you didn't see that woman in the crosswalk? And I go, oh, can I not? I was like, I thought you can still turn. And he goes, did you take the driver's license test? Wow. And I go, yeah. He goes, should have been in the driver's license test. Guess you didn't take it. And then it was, and then he got a call. He went back to his stupid little gay motorcycle <laughs> with the two shotguns crossed on the, the back. Two shot, yeah, he looked Have like, you seen that? Yeah, I've literally seen that. Yeah. yeah, he went back and he's like, "I just got a call. You're lucky. Six hundred dollar ticket. You were gonna get six hundred. And I'm like, "All right, thanks, oh, man. God. Go off on your little. Go beat a homeless guy, Dude, you idiot. One time, an LA cop pulled me over and he just told me how fucking shitty I was at driving. <laughs> For like five minutes and then he left. He wasn't even like on duty. Yeah, he was yeah. like, dude, what the hell are you doing? Mm -hmm. He's like, you don't know how to drive. Mm -hmm. He's like, you just cut me off like that? I'm like, I had to get back into the lane because this lane was a turn only that came out of nowhere, which happens in LA where it's like, you don't want to turn right onto the freeway yeah. and go 40 miles and then have to U-turn. So I cut him off. Yeah. But oh, it's fine. You are what's wrong with Los Angeles traffic. No, but in fucking Every, New, no, everybody no, drives in New like York, you I can do that. Eh. Uh, yeah, fine. Who in cares? New York, who cares in New York? I fucking cut him off. Like here, everybody's like, I got to get where I'm going. He's a fat fucking Fuck retard. Uh, still. I'm delivering Postmates and I have to deliver it under a certain amount of time so I could have got tipped. Yeah. I'm on the clock. You don't have to deliver Postmates anymore. I'm on the clock. But that's <laughs> but during this, this moment, I'm trying to rush to this place in Pasadena to deliver them their Poke Bowl. The Pasadena cops are the worst. They're, they're the worst pretty ones. bad. Yeah, yeah, because we film out there all the time, and they're the, yeah, they suck. But pretty yeah. much, the guy just hurt my feelings for five yeah, minutes. Yeah, it's just yeah, didn't just give me a ticket and then left. Mean, yeah, just insults you about things that have nothing to do with the traffic. Oh, stuff. Yeah. dude, I really pissed him off because he goes, he goes, if, I go, well, I I can't really see the directions that well because I have to look down and look back up. He goes, have you heard of this thing called Map Quest? Wow. And I go, I swear to God, here's what I said. I wasn't trying to be a smartass. I go, oh, yeah, I think my grandmother used it. Because <laughs> literally people used to use that with, when Garmin was a thing in like 2001 and you had like OnStar and shit. Yeah. My mom still uses the TomTom. -tom. Dude, he goes. Yeah, you would like print out directions on like mm -hmm. sheets of paper. And if you missed the turn. Yeah, you're just fucked. You just yeah. have to go back and start Thoughts over. Thoughts and prayers. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you got. She realized I wasn't trying to like shit on him or anything. He realized I was just an idiot. Mm -hmm. And he like sighed because he almost got mad. And he's like, he's just dumb. Yeah, he's clearly like you can't he's, fix stupid. He saw my Ru Rubik's cube like in the passenger seat. He's like, he has autism or something. Right, I'm just gonna let him go. Poor fuck. How's yeah, that going? By the way, is it cleared up yet? No, yeah, still I'm got taking it. meds. Yeah. But. <laughs> he saw your diaper and he just let you go. <laughs> yeah. No, my one of my <laughs> he old... sees my dick <laughs> sticking hard up <laughs> outside of my diaper. Yeah, and he's tucked like, upward. Oh, Dude, Jesus. I met an up tucker the other day. You guys ever met an up tucker? Wait, well, like he when he gets a boner, he tucks it in. Nope, that's normal. The whole he time? tucks it up all the time. What? He's a full time up tucker. So that's gonna it, be the name of this. That's episode. the tip of craziest his dick thing I've yeah. ever heard. Slightly he above also, his belt. No, it, I think I don't know, but when I don't think he has enough to like maybe. What is he? So it's just it's just permanently behind his he, buckle like that. It's in his <laughs> waistband of his underwear, and he says he's been doing it his whole life. And he also says he has extreme ED. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, because he's broken his dick. <laughs> You strapped it to your belly button. He's for smushing the last his dick for thirty years in yeah. a row. Jesus, I didn't purposely did not say his name in case he watches this. Yeah, episode. that's like actually kind of disturbing. It's very disturbing. It's like serial Strange. killer behavior. Yeah, it's like he's gonna snap one day and be like, "I've been up tucking my whole life." <laughs> <laughs> have you tried the underwear where they separate your balls into its own little pouch? I have. Yeah. Uh, not a fan. Yeah, I don't feel like that's good. No, because it's supposed to like wick moisture away. Yeah, but. How uh, wet are you getting down there? You well, know, it's like, I mean, if you're working out aggressively, sure, maybe, but I don't know. There's not enough wicking. Those. Yeah. What am I, John Wick? Yeah. No. I'm not I, trying I, to exceptionally small balls anyway. If you couldn't tell, right? So I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. You, he's like, you look like a guy with <laughs> tiny balls. Actually. Yeah. I want to start wearing those old. Uh, Red long johns like cat like John Wayne would wear with in the movie. flap in the back, with a big flap where you get yeah. up. I want to unbutton my flap and then take a shit. Yeah, and <laughs> then flap flap it back up and then yeah. yeah. 
I have a Christmas onesie that does that. Really? Yeah. You, have you ever taken it down to the shit? No, I zip it down the front. Oh, okay. You, and then you just know, shimmy it off. You could right. turn your boxers backwards and shit through the hole. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I do know that. You blew my mind. <laughs> I do know that. Yeah. I can't <laughs> wait to get home and turn my boxers around. <laughs> <laughs> I wear the boxer briefs, though. I don't like the boxer boxers. They always bunched up above your belt. Mm. But... Yeah, boxer boxers are not great. Whitey tighties are tough because they just kind of smush your dick and balls. Yeah. You know what I like doing? No underwear, hand down my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm squeezing just walk, my nuts. And walk, <laughs> walking around town. I'm squeezing yeah. down there. Just you stick your thumb out the zipper hole and <laughs> yeah. start waving it at people. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. It's not illegal. Just uh, my style. Yeah. <laughs> you just stay in a wives playing. Just you walking down the street. By the way, dudes. what is the what is the thing guys do? And I do it too, where you're alone watching TV in your underwear and you're like your hand is in your pants and you're just like holding yourself. It's a pre jerk. What the hell is that? It's a pre jerk. Yeah. Just, I think it just feels good. Yeah. Yeah. But why does my hand need to be down there? Your balls are hot, your hands are cold. It's a hand warmer. That and it just feels good. Yeah. It feels good, you know. Why does and it feel good to smoke a cigarette? We watched Al Bundy. Because of a chemical reaction. Yeah. Well there you go. Al Bundy showed us the way. Exactly. We in the eighties. Yeah. Nineties, whatever. Mm. Just tuck it right down there. Yeah. It was always funny that he never wanted to fuck his really hot wife. That was always weird to me. It was weird. Yeah. Or his really come, hot daughter. He didn't yeah. want to fuck her either. <laughs> yeah. You know what? They, always come in with her huge tits yeah. and like great body. And then he acted like, like he was all annoyed. Yeah. He'd be like, eh, get away from she me. She was like, Al, let's do it. He's like, no. That's like, <laughs> Al at Bundy's actually super gay. Yeah. He's a closeted gay man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had that club and they all wore shirts that said, no, ma'am. Right. He sold shoes for a living. Yeah. He yeah. had a foot fetish. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird freak. I wonder why that show's not on the air anymore. <laughs> or it's not on streaming either. Oh, it's not? No. You can find it on YouTube, I think. Yeah, I remember being confused by that show as a kid because I didn't get it with satire. Mm -hmm. I don't think I like understood what satire was. Oh, you're like, why are they married if they hate each other? I was like, I was like, this show is like freakish. Like I thought it was just insane. I didn't realize they were making fun of like sitcoms. Mm. I know. didn't realize that until right now either. Yeah, no, it was just yeah, it was just like a deconstruction of the whole sitcom thing, right? I th yeah, I mean that makes perfect sense. They now. can never make that show now. Nobody's having kids. <laughs> Are you gonna have kids, Ben? Nobody's have, getting married. They'd have to call am, it yeah. open married with with a uh, fucking adopted open married with a rescue dog with rescue dogs. Right. Ethically non monogamous. Yeah, yeah everybody's ethically soul. non monogamous now. Yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> What's it's not that ethical though, is it? I think it's usually one person. It's like the Thomas Middleditch thing. It's like one person who really wants to do it and one person gets talked into it and then... Somebody's feelings get hurt. Yeah, and then they get divorced. Why yeah. can't people understand that sexuality is fluid? Like, if you just look at history, like, why is it a big deal to people? What do you mean? Like, Spartans used to, like, think it was masculine to have sex with other men. Right. When they and they won thought it was a feminine battle. to have sex with women. You had sex with women privately because it was, like, gay. Right. And it, it was, was like, embarrassing yeah. that you wanted pussy. Right. You, you were like, like if you went and got pussy, you wouldn't go bragging about it all over town. They thought gay sex was like weightlifting now. Exactly. Yeah. It was like the most masculine bro thing you could do. Right. So sexuality is this fluid thing that changes throughout history. It's never once like a structured thing. That being said, uh, I'm not gay. <laughs> I'm not gay. Yeah, like, that's like the just out of gender fluid. That's all. Yeah, that's the closet gay, gay version of being like, listen, back in ancient times, they would have sex with 13 year olds. You know, this age thing is really a concept. Not that I want to. Yeah, not that I want to. I know the age of consent in every state in America, but I don't want to do <laughs> yeah. that. Well, it depends by state. Yeah, the guys are like, well, in, Ar in Arkansas, you can have sex with a 16 year old. That's the most pedophile thing you can say is just yeah. it depends on the state. You would, it would, it's more pedophile to say that than to be like, I have hard drives of child pornography on my computer at home. I had to look up all the state laws when I worked at a record label when I was 19. Really? For the band that I was working for. Just to like. Just so they had a chart. They had a little like, <laughs> all right. We just. This is how we find out you're like a human trafficker. Well. When they drove into a state where it was 16, would they all be like, woo? As soon as they crossed the state line, they would park yeah. the bus and kiss the ground. <laughs> We're you know, home. You know what I hate about sex trafficking? Rush hour. Wow. <laughs> Man, that really sucks. That's so horrible. Is that your brand? Mm -hmm. You're sponsored by Royal Yacht uh, Tobacco? Yeah. I feel like it's the most me tobacco I could smoke. Royal Yacht. Yeah. Why is that? 
We get a cease and desist from them. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Please don't plug our products on your podcast anymore. We don't even want six people knowing that you smoke it. Right. So you're the only one who's made pipe smoking look uh, stupid. Yeah, so pretty much. Stop it. This is probably annoying the hell out of everybody watching. That you have a corncob pipe. Yeah. yeah. You're like Jay Leno in the 70s. He used to do that on stage? Yeah, no, he used to have a corn, He used to have a pipe. If you read that book, I'm Dying Up Here, every picture is, is him, big, poofy hair, and he's got a... He's hanging out at parties, and he's got a pipe, mm. and he's smoking it. I think he was trying to pull off the uh, Hugh Hefner. Yeah, that type. That, uh, that is he's true. doing a character. Kind yeah, because yeah, Hugh Hefner would do like... Playboy After Dark, which is like the legit version of like what aired on television, mm-hmm. and he would be smoking a pipe all the time. Yeah, and it, a lot of people did smoke pipes in the fifties, so like wasn't yeah. that far removed. It'd be like yeah. wearing like flannel today, like it's a nineties yeah. throwback. Or I something. think a lot of guys came home from the war and they quit cigarettes, and they were like, "Well, I still like a pipe every once in a while." Sure. Yeah. My grandfather had like ninety pipes, but he still smoked two packs of cigarettes today. <laughs> he would. I smoke a, a pipe when pipe. I'm not yeah, when yeah. I'm out of cigarettes or when I don't want a cigarette. I'll smoke a pipe. Yeah, I did pipe smoke. I think everybody smokes a pipe when they're 21. You get into it. That's You know what's weird? Yeah, especially if you love Lord of the Rings. Yeah. But you know what I realized is just weird about uh, grandfathers coming back from war and stuff? It's like they couldn't talk about it because like the unspeakable evil, like uh, like they saw their friends die and stuff in the war. Uh-huh. But like they're not bothered at all by like the countless like young women they raped. Right. In like villages and stuff. Yeah, they're not like on it. That, that, they're totally, they sleep fine with. Some French maid in a little yeah, barn somewhere. Or some Vietnamese like lady that oh, they sure. just like, yeah. I mean, they burned her house down and then just like, I mean, I don't want to get too graphic here. Right. But you can picture what I, I could say. I'm yeah. not really sure what you're talking about. And he's just like, ah, I saw my buddy uh, got get blown up. Yeah. I raped 30 women, but my buddy. <laughs> buddy. Hey, landmine got him. <laughs> then I raped 30 women, but that landmine. But everybody's idea of like Vietnam and, th- and war is like uh, Forrest Gump. Right. Where it's like you and your buddy just sort of running through the rain. And or they go like, into town on their days off and they pay for sex. Right. It, it is funny that like Vietnam actually d- it's, has a soundtrack. Like there's 10 songs that if you play on. Bird I'm is like, the word. <laughs> Bird is the word. Which I unironically listened to a lot is which was in full metal jacket yeah, yeah. but no like if you play like you know like any buffalo ccr S- song ccr buffalo yeah. springfield all on the watchtower it's just like oh i feel like i'm in vietnam yeah. right now if i play if i play fortune son i feel like i'm in vietnam yeah yeah because i'm having sex with a a, a prostitute from mm-hmm. there's that one ccr song that i feel like i'm in a helicopter fortunate son is that the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Some folks are born made yeah. of red that woman. Is, yeah, that's it. Who sung that again? You just don't lead him so far. John Fogarty. Mm. He's the only guy who got sued for uh, ripping himself off in the music industry because he left CCR. He didn't own any of the rights to the music. I think oh. Columbia or RCA did. Yeah. He then wrote the song Old Man uh, Down the River. And then the record company sued him for ripping off Green River, mm. which was a song he wrote 10 years prior, and they won, and he had to pay the record company. Oh, my God, yeah. dude. Oh. Just the most evil business of all time. I mean, the fact that record companies even exist anymore blows my mind. Right. There's hundreds and hundreds of employees at every major record label, and you got to get what? A million and a half streams to make a thousand dollars as an artist. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Now so how taking, are they making? Are they just living off of the royalties that they've stolen from people it, over the years? It used to be that you could make a living just off your touring and selling merch. Mm-hmm. But now, when you get signed, you're signing what's called a 360 deal. They're taking your touring, they're taking your merch money, they're taking public appearances. Like if you make money, they're taking brand deals off your social media. If you're making money, they're taking a piece of it. Do you think that's related to the fact that they can't make money off the records anymore? So they're just like, oh, we're just going to vampire everything now. Oh, that's exactly. When we stopped selling physical copies, that's immediately when 360 deals came around. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So now people are going fully independent. Right. And then they're building out their brand. Because that used to be, right, the artists would get ripped off by the label when it came to the record, but then they would yeah. go tour and that's how they made their money. And they would make tons of money, but they would still even make like Michael Jackson. I think he made, that's a bad reference. 
People in the '80s that sold physical <laughs> copies of vinyl would make like a dollar fifty of the nine right. or ten dollars. If you if you had a songwriting credit, right, or a producing credit, yeah, you would so still get the royalties. There's physical royalties and there's performance royalties. Okay. So if you played in the band on the record, then you got like a nickel every time they sold okay. a record. Right. But if you're the main artist, then you got like ten or fifteen points on the record, so you get like a dollar, dollar fifty. So if you sold ten million copies, you got ten, fifteen million dollars. Right. Meanwhile, the record label got. 90 million dollars right mm. but for every it's like the movie business right for every five ten movies you make that flop you got to have a hit to pay for all the movies that you funded sure so you know it takes you know a couple hundred grand in marketing to get a hit record the payola the pay to play like right paying off disc jockeys and yeah. stuff the yeah. radio used to be all commercials and they was disguised as songs Okay. <laughs> but the record label was paying for a three and a half minute advertisement oh and okay. that would be your song Right. And you could put it in two and a half hour rotation, which would be top 40. Mm -hmm. And if it got played enough, people would go buy the album. I, I've heard now that like record companies apparently are like basically like artists are so frustrated about the amount of TikToks that they're making them make now. Oh, yeah. Like they'll That's literally insane. call up like Charlie X, X, C, X and be like, hey, we need you to make six a week. You're at, you're at three. We need you to make three more by the end of today. Yeah. I mean, if they're taking their TikTok money, that's nuts. Yeah. They like wouldn't let Halsey or whatever her name is put out a, a song because, she, as punishment, because she hadn't released enough TikToks for the, like that week. Man, my yeah. my little brother's uh, girlfriend monetized her TikTok, and she gets she doesn't have a bajillion followers. She's got like eighty ninety thousand TikTok followers. Mm -hmm. She's making decent money. Really? Not like not. I mean, she can live not live off of it, but it's like it helps. She a could lot. live in Haiti off of it. She lives in Nashville, so okay. it's like. That's it, you know. It's an extra couple grand a month, right, off of TikTok for not even having a hundred thousand followers. It feels like everybody has ninety thousand TikTok followers now. Yeah, it's almost like a fake app. It's or either something. that or one point six million. Yeah, <laughs> I have twenty three TikTok followers. Right. Yeah. It's 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 always like somebody like I got like fifty, fifty, just fifty. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think I yeah I think I have like a hundred or something. They just banned me from uploading. Really? Yeah. What, what were you uploading? Like literally just like Gracie and Emma and like me making nachos <laughs> and they've blocked me from uploading your shadow shadow ban for your nachos. It won't work. let me upload uh -huh. anything. And I looked up why and it just says, oh, they just they stopped you from uploading for two days. You received a strike or something. They're like, this sucks so much. I don't even know what I did. Yeah. I got reported recently on Instagram for that John LGBTQ mm -hmm. drawing because it was a guy holding a gun to his head. But it was the movie John Q. Mm -hmm. It's Denzel holding a gun to his head, but I still got like reported mm -hmm. for it. Well, whatever. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You probably get reported a lot though, right? Your stuff is... No, I'm usually pretty careful about it. It's weird that Instagram will like... You can put anything up as long as it's not sex, uh, violence, mm -hmm. or like drugs. If it's anything outside of that... Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I could literally be like, somebody should not kill the president of the United States. Yep, you're going on a list for that. Yeah, I'm going on a list, but I feel like that would not get reported. I've already got reported for like I did a comic that was making fun of like woke comedians, just somebody walking up to a mic and then saying uh, white men suck and then a whole crowd cheering. Mm. And I got reported for the phrase white men suck wow. because it was like it was like a, a racial comment. But the, these computers that search for stuff, they, they don't understand irony or satire. Right. So they thought it was just like a, ra a racial thing that I was posting. So now that they're in the process of filming White Men Can't Jump 2, yeah. <laughs> when they go to post the promo. It's going to be a real problem. It's going to be an issue. They got to say white men can jump okay. <laughs> they can't. White men can't jump like they used to. Like they used to, right? White men are getting worse at jumping. Right. <laughs> white men are trying hard to jump. Right. Are they filming White Men Can't Jump too? They indeed are. Really? I think so. I think they're in uh, principal photography Is right it now. called the number two, two white, two jump? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have been saying that if they make another Fast and Furious movie, they're just going to call it F.U. Because <laughs> they just made so many and they've taken all of our money. Yeah, I think they're on number 10 now. They are. Yeah. They're going to make one more. Also, I also think they should stop making Mission Impossible movies. Well, they will when Tom Cruise dies. But apparently <laughs> uh, Top Gun 2? Yeah. Man, I haven't seen it. I've heard it's great. I have too. And he learned how to fly a jet for that thing. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he's crazy. My top like nerd ass movie critic buddies, like cinephiles that I know are mm -hmm. like, it's better than the original. And I'm like, that's a bold statement, dude. I've, I've heard people say it's a really solid movie. And then the last 30 minutes are like the best action you've ever seen in your life. Oh. 
It's just them and like the Does Jets. he do 9-11? Yeah, he does 9-11. It's Tom Cruise in a big wig with a box cutter. <laughs> He's going, oh, oh. <laughs> He lands at a commercial airport, gets out of the fighter jet, gets in at 747. Yeah. Mark Wahlberg's there. He's trying to kick his ass the whole time. <laughs> I'm just trying to fly these jets. Have you heard, you've heard Wahlberg's quote about 9 11? Because he was supposed to be on one of those planes. Hit, oh, seriously? That hit the tower. And he had a quote where he's like, I'll tell you something. If I had been on that plane a little that day, it would have gone down a lot differently than it did. And there would have been a lot of blood in that fucking cabin. He's basically saying he would have single-handedly stopped 9-11. And then, like, happening. landed the plane, and I then guess. Land, and then he's, I think he said he would have landed the plane. <laughs> That's amazing. Amazing. Just, Seriously? Yeah, no, he really said that. That's a real quote. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know who else was supposed to be on the plane was the... Family Guy. Family Guy. Yeah, Seth MacFarlane. Mm-hmm. Dude. Damn shame. Wow. We could have never to... had... We might have never had the Cleveland show. Mm-hmm. What? Nothing. I was gonna humble brag about working on Family Guy, but I don't. Oh, think did you is, really? I did the hundred and fifty. Oh, episode. what's Stewie like? <laughs> <laughs> I had to change his diaper like six times. He's so fucking evil. Yeah, why is he trying to kill his mom? <laughs> He's got like a good life. <laughs> he just walks around the office like, "Are we ready to shoot?" <laughs> That's funny. What was it like working on Family Guy? I, I worked on the promo for the 150th episode. We shot okay. it at the Family Guy offices, mm-hmm. and I was off-camera voice talent. Ooh, there you go. It was great. That's because they didn't hire a voice actor for that shit. You played the Black Weatherman? Uh, I told... Seth was like lying about the 150th episode promo being in 3D, and I said, Hey, it's not in 3D. He goes, huh? <laughs> All right. That's my biggest film credit. And did you, you get a little point, some points on the back end for that? I got paid for that day. Oh, yeah. there you go. Nice. Scale? No, I got I was AD on the job. Okay, so I just what commercials are you directing these days? These days, uh, I'm doing a lot of like internal tech shit that no one sees unless you work at the company. That probably pays a lot, though, right? It indeed is pretty fun. My friend just got an editing job specifically mm-hmm. working for tech companies, and it's pretty good paycheck. Yeah, yeah. My, my um, very best friend, uh, who's a big fan of yours, by the way. Oh, he actually wants you to start directing for him. We'll talk about that off air. Uh, and I was like, why? What makes Ben qualified to direct? He's like, because I fucking like Ben and I listen to the show. And I was like, <laughs> cool. I'm just your best friend. And I've just been like, directing for 15 years. Right. No big deal. I was like, so you're telling me you would give Ben a directing job over me? He's like, in a heartbeat. Wow, how about that? <laughs> yeah. Nice. So we'll talk about that later. But uh, yeah, it's fun shit. I show up on set just in a diaper. Yeah. A very right. big adult diaper. And the Ron Howard a director's hat. Do you know... Smoking your pipe. Yeah. I wore an adult diaper once. Yeah. And I pissed and shit in it just to see what it's like. Yeah. So I will What'd say this... What you do with the other 10? If, <laughs> what? They don't just sound singles. Yeah, it comes oh, in yeah. a pack. I think I just like... Just threw, borrow one Oh, from no. Somebody. He ate them. No, I got diapers. <laughs> you could buy adult diapers at Goodwill. They were like an opened package. Used. Well, you bought, you bought, gently used. Yeah, you bought a Lucy for you went in and you go, can I get a single? <laughs> you bought it from that guy who got choked in New York. <laughs> Bummed a dollar from somebody. Yeah. I guess some old guy like died and then they just gave his diapers to Goodwill. The yeah. ones he died yeah. in? Well, not the ones he died in. They were still in the box, but the box was open. You got it at an estate sale. No, I got it at Goodwill. I no, got I telling know. you. So how did it feel to shit and piss yourself? If you piss in a diaper, mm-hmm. like all the way, yeah, like it'll, it'll go out the sides, right? Uh, it'll go down your leg. It gets so heavy, it snaps off. Wow. Hmm. Which is why I think people, which I always wondered why they do this, people do the clothespin uh, method, the bobby pin method with the diaper. On their nose? No, 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 no. They do the bobby pins on the side, like uh, Tommy Pickles. Oh, like an old cartoon from yeah. the 30s. Because yeah. that adhesive is not enough. Like so baby Herman. If you've ever worn a diaper out there, you need like to either duct tape it or do bobby pins. Because if you got a lot of piss and shit coming, it will just snap off completely. Well, could you take your belt maybe and just cinch it around the top <laughs> of the diaper? Belt around your diaper. <laughs> just cauliflowers right. out the top. Well, yeah, you're wearing, a, so you're, wearing a, you're wearing a proper suit, but with the diaper. I'm wearing diaper suspenders. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> red white and blue yeah and the socks with yeah. the little strap that hooks yeah. it to the side 
the garter. Woo! Those make me feel sexy when I wear those. Have garments. you ever worn? I've never worn them before. Oh man, nothing says just sexual chemistry like. Do, is it the one that goes up like the whole leg? Oh yeah, the, I do the, the thigh highs for woo! sure. Yeah, that's the fancy bit. Yeah, I've always wanted to try one of those. There was a guy I used to work with who was ex uh, marine who used to wear those all the time. Yeah, and then he showed up one day on a bunch of pills and he got fired. He had really bad PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> Larry's high again. Yeah, yeah, I was say. He was a nice guy though. Yeah. Really cool dude. He's moved to Texas now, bought a big house. So well, that's what you get in Texas. Yeah, he's doing all right. Yeah. yeah. Every house in Texas looks like the mansion from the righteous gemstones. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, there's just nothing to do though. That's the problem. Can't get a taco truck at one AM, I'll tell you that. Mm. When people say there's nothing to do, what they really mean is there's no one worth talking to. Yeah, that that really is. That's it. really just what it is. Because it's like I don't do anything here, but at least there's like the most in- I can go talk to some of the most interesting people I've ever known. Versus mm. like, yeah, we didn't see you at church on Wednesday. <laughs> that type of guy, no jaw, man. <laughs> just like I mean, people you talk to, they got nothing. Yeah, cross-eyed. You go, give me something. Big flies around his head. I mean, there's a lot of that in L.A. too, but occasionally you're going to hit the target and find someone who can have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. And then you've been, I mean, if you're in, you know, they always say L.A., you got to give it three years and then you meet all the people you like. And yeah. The four-year hump or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then 10 years to get your career off the ground and make some money. Right, exactly. By the time you're 50, you're rolling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the decade of your, the years of your 40s is when your career really goes... It's like when you see like people directing these two hundred million dollar movies; they're in their sixties. Yeah, you've got to work your way all the way up to the. Yeah, and that, I mean that makes sense for a lot of people, like even people's normal careers, because usually the twenty, like if somebody's just working in finance, the twenties suck. Thirties yeah. are better, and then by forty, they're making like crazy cash or whatever. That's why everyone leaves immediately because they go, "Oh, I want to be a film director," and you go, "Well, are you like PAing or anything?" They go, "I don't want to do any of that." Yeah. yeah. I don't want to learn how to do the craft of filmmaking. Are, at they all. immediately want to are make there, the thing they've always. Are wanted. they literally be like, I want to be a writer? It's like, what? What are you writing? And they're like, I, Oh, and I'm waiting for somebody to give me money to write a mm. movie. Yeah, yeah, I've got all the great ideas, but we're gonna have to pay me to get them out. They, they literally think like a guy in a big top hat is gonna be like, Here's a check for one million dollars for your movie to Did write. Did you see? You know that uh, writer Rollins, uh, Donnell, uh, yeah, he's, Ashley Larry. He's an author. Uh, last name Rollins. I think is it Henry John Rollins? Rollins? Henry maybe Henry, Henry Rollins. Henry he's Rollins. a singer from Black Flag. Yeah. Oh well, he's also an author. Yep. He's a guy who worked in some. He gave up his veterinarian business yep. for like thirty years to become a writer. Is he the guy who wrote the King's Speech? I think. Yeah. Maybe okay. that's not Henry Rollins then. No, Rollins. Henry Rollins worked at Baskin Robbins before he joined back Black Flag, and then he did spoken word. Yeah, in, in the nineties, and oh, he's okay. been annoying for forty years. But he just started his own book club dispensary thing today. I guess. Yeah. I guess I don't know what I, I'm talking about. Or okay. What well, what? Sorry. About. What's the story? Yeah. Of the Basically, guy? this guy's an author. Sam Talent shared it on his stories. Okay. That's the guy. That's the guy from the band. That's okay. Henry Rollins. Yeah. And but he started his own book. Uh, publishing company. Publishing company. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. also an author. That's Correct. so funny. He yeah. thought he was a veterinarian. <laughs> I looked it up. It said he was a vet. Mm. No, no, no. I looked he at said, my Google history. No, he was not a vet. He was in the he was in the punk band Black Flag, like almost his whole life. Yeah, people have tattoos of the four bars. Yeah, he was like the hardest guy in the most legit like punk band of all time. He was MMA before there was MMA. Yeah, exactly. Like he would fuck you up. He was like he, he was like the first jack guy in punk rock. If you do a movie and you need like white supremacists, you yeah. cast him to play it, but the, he's not actually a white he supremacist. He was in um fucking Sons of Anarchy mm-hmm. and he he would he was shirtless and he had a fake tattoo that says I hate N words on his chest playing a skinhead. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is the guy I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, well he was acting. Oh, but anyway, okay. no, he was a singer, and he would, he was just talking about DIY punk DIY. Oh, okay. He's like he's like I didn't wait for anybody to right. tell me to write a book. I wrote a book, and then I went to the printing place, and now I started my own book company. And I chopped down a tree, and then I made paper by myself. Yeah. <laughs> I did the little, I pressed it down, and the little thing made the with, papyrus. Yeah, with the water, forged my own yeah. printing press. This guy, here, Sam Talents. Yeah, he, no, I saw the story. It's Henry Rollins. Yeah, yeah. 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 But he just goes, yeah. He goes, uh, nobody's going to stop me from doing what I want to do. Yeah, where people are like. He goes, oh, you want to you want to publish a book? Sit down and write it. He's yeah. like, I dare you to stop me. Right. He's like, go. He's like, no one's going to publish it. Pick up a phone. 
can't find a printer find someone with a printer call them go which, print it i dare you to stop me from which your good it friend sam it. talent did he just wrote a book self-published it mm. and he was like on the fucking like new york times bestseller mm. list yeah i mean the last time i talked to sam he moved like almost forty thousand copies i'm sure it's way higher now yeah it's forty thousand copies which he got paid directly for every time yeah mm. i knew, I knew you only owe amazon like a buck yeah or two bucks or whatever. Yeah, per book it's like two dollars. Or yeah. he makes more if you go to his website. But yeah, than Amazon. Go to samtalent.com. I don't know if that's the right website. Yeah, it's a very good book. I read it. I read it, and I was so because Sam's a very funny comedian. I was so pissed off that he's also such a great writer that I told him, I was like, I was like, this book is great. I fucking hate you. You can tell by the way he talks that he's an author. Yeah, well, he he reads oh, volumes a day. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So I've been trying to get him to read. Because he, he gives me books to read, uh-huh. and I've been trying to give him books to read, and I'll hand one to him. And I'm like, this is a, by a guy named J.A. Baker. It's called The Peregrine. And it's about a guy who followed around a falcon for 10 years and like lost his mind. Mm-hmm. And it's like beautiful prose. I told you Werner Herzog recommended it. I've heard of this book. Yeah, it's literally just about a guy. And it makes sense that Werner would like it because it's just a guy who lost his mind chasing the singular Being obsessive thing. over one thing. Yeah. He like I think it destroyed his life because he just followed around this bird. Mm-hmm. He, was, he was fascinated with its beauty. And I tried to give it to Sam. He was like, uh, naturalistic nonfiction. He goes... I think this is a hard pass for me, buddy. <laughs> I think this is a pretty hard sell. Yeah, he goes, he likes, so it's not fiction in any way. I'm like, no, it's just he falls around a bird and describes it. He goes, you enjoy it, but I think that's good for me. But he goes, here's a great book by this guy. Who, right. You know, here's this flower, flowery literature about the human condition. Dude, so he he had me read this book. Oh, actually, I don't, I don't know if I can tell this story uh, because, yeah, I can't tell it, actually. Cause it's about the Secrets. it's about the author. I don't. Well, actually, maybe I can't tell it. Eh, you like, you if, like, if you're ever worried about it, don't do it. Just tell us later. Yeah. You you uh you were like you should read this book and then you hand him a think like a man, act like a woman. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The Steve Harvey book, <laughs> dude. Okay, so I can tell it without naming the author. How about this? Okay. So he told me this guy's son is a fan of Sam's, and he came to his show, and Sam's a huge fan of his dad, who's uh not around anymore but he was an author he wrote like 10 books or something okay and he's like one of sam's favorite authors and uh the guy doesn't know anything about his dad he told sam because sam wanted to know all these questions he goes the only thing i know about my dad is when he died i found a vhs tape of him having sex with hookers like wearing a gorilla mask like in motels (laughs) like violent hyper violent sex (laughs) but like this amazing writer oh he's yeah also brilliant yeah, yeah fucked hookers with a gorilla mask on it's hard to find good gorilla masks these days. Yeah. <laughs> or good hookers. That's so funny. It'd be crazy that that's the only thing you know about your Yeah, dad. literally like being like pushing the VHS in and being like almost trying to find a moment of like, I need to understand who my dad is. Mm-hmm. And you push it in being like, maybe this is it. And then you just see him like. Well, it's probably not a tape that you find on your own either. It's probably your family is probably gathered around right. in the living room <laughs> to view all, this masterpiece. I'll push it in, yeah. It just gets real awkward with your family sitting there watching you. I, I've heard from friends before that when their dads died, I heard this from a friend, her dad died, and then she found all his old pornos mm. cleaning out his place, like like boxes just full of VH, old VHS pornos. Yeah, I had a roommate who's, bef- I mean, it wasn't a death thing, but he inherited every copy of Playboy from its inception. Really? Yeah, and then he was a dickhead roommate and moved out and just left them all there. And I pulled, like at the time, all my friends' birth month and year. That's great. And I gave everybody their birth month Playboy. That's like a perfect gift. That's yeah. cool. That's great. And I lost mine. I don't know where mine is. Yeah, those are like those are like collectible now, like those old Playboys. It was on the cover of yours. I don't even remember. Hmm. I mean, it was 1970. <laughs> yeah. What's the age cap for podcasters? <laughs> Apparently it's 53. Yeah. So thank you for coming and joining me here. Thank you, Isaac. Of course. And Thanks it for was having really us. great meeting you. And of I hope course. you'll come back and smoke your pipes with me some other time. Yeah. We'll I'll smoke to. cigars next time. The pipe's obnoxious. But this way, Jace got cigars. I got the pipes because I only had two. Did you not um, get a cigar? Uh, no. I gave the cigars to Jace. Well, I think I, my vape ran out about 10 minutes ago or we fucking keep going for like another hour. Or so. Right. So we're all out of nicotine No, I'm products. good. I need to go to bed. Yeah, yeah. Same. Well, thanks again for coming, guys. Yeah, of course. And we'll see you next time on the Isaac Abrams show. I don't want to do outros like that anymore. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nobody. That's no real podcasters are like, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Don't forget to smash that like button. Yeah. Meow, 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 meow.